I am very happy to be talking with my dear friend and author, Dr. Christina Fitch, also known as Ina. It's wonderful to see you today. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Thank you. So we are uh, launching your book. Last week we launched When You Give a Woman the World. And I'd love to hear from you what inspired you to write this story that is both your both your personal story and also a journal to help people capture and share their own stories and write write about their travel adventures. What inspired you to do this? Well, I've been traveling for 20 years and most of it, I actually traveled alone as a single woman. And I would write uh, emails or keep travel journals through those 20 years. And I shared a lot of those with friends along the way, including a mentor of mine who's been along the path with me since undergraduate through graduate school, medical school residency, you know, he's, he's been um, a really wonderful support. And he said to me, and actually since we've published, several other people have said, didn't I tell you that over the years you should get these published? But, okay. So I heard it from more than one person, I guess. Um, but I think people found them entertaining, you know, little anecdotes or culturally uh, interesting, um, world expanding. Um, and so that was the inspiration to originally write my own stories. And then of course I had these, I, this idea in my mind and then the pandemic came around and this is certainly a pandemic opus that you helped me with, mm -hmm. so appreciative. Um, but the, the women's journal, I, I felt in some ways that my stories are insufficient, right? They're my experience. I enjoyed them, I learned from them, I grew from them. And other people have equally interesting, world expanding, challenging experiences. And I wanted to support other women who might be considering travel or who have traveled and are trying to make sense or grow from some of their experiences. I, I wanted them to be supported. And I realized as I did a literature search, if you will, that there's nothing really like this out there. You know, um, I'm hoping to fill a gap, if you will. Um, I did, uh, one other book that did inspire me was um, Sand in My Bra, a compilation of women's travel stories. And I um, did not include my experience when I was in Indonesia reading that book in this uh, travel book, but um, it was definitely world changing. I remember being up all night laughing my head off. Um, and I thought to myself, I have some stories to share too, so. <laughs> and I, um, one thing I wanted to make sure we talked about is in your bio at the end, it says that you visited 35 countries, and, which is amazing. <laughs> and sometimes as a doctor teacher, but always as a student of culture and spirituality. Oh, so I'm, and I'm curious what, so sometimes you write in the book about you're there in a professional capacity, right? To um, to learn, to to research, to support, to to help people in that country. Um, and I love that balance of okay, you're going there to help and to learn from the people that you are visiting. Um, what inspired all of this? I, I, you know, we grew up in the same town. We grew up in Avon, Connecticut. <laughs> and I'm curious, like what had you open up to wanting to go and explore so much of the world in your life? Oh, wow. Um, I think I have it in my blood. I can say that much. Um, many people look at me and they don't know what my background is kind of uh, culturally or ethnically. And my mother's side, I'm Japanese and Portuguese. On my father's, I'm Irish, English, and Dutch. And if you think about all of those uh, people, um, I guess the Japanese were somewhat isolationist, but the rest were quite tr world travelers. And um, it, just in the last couple generations, um, you know, I have several uh, aunties who were world travelers when that wasn't the cool thing to do. And, you know, they were going with other women travelers. So they inspired me. There's their stories growing up, my Aunt Lila would bring me rocks from Mount Vesuvius and, you know, coins from different countries. Um, but also, like my Portuguese ancestors, they they traveled from the Azores all the way to Hawaii. You know, we have travel in the blood. So um, 
I think that that was always there. And then when I was an undergraduate, as the first story, um, first step and last stumble alludes to, I had the great blessing in my life to be given a semester abroad, four and a half months, 14 countries. And it was 35 of us students just stumbling about, you know, trying to cause less harm than the knowledge that we gained, you know, at the age of 21. And I was bitten by the travel bug, you know, and happily the profession I chose, you know, I, I've really been able to integrate um, my public health degree, my medical degree, uh, my certificate in tropical medicine, and, you know, go to other countries, teach, learn, um, have other people come to this country and support them in that. Mm -hmm. And I love your stories in the book because they're so entertaining, right? You're, you are there often for a very specific, serious, you know, thing to be doing, right? To take mm -hmm. <laughs> as a doctor in these spaces. And you bring such funny anecdotes and as well as this real um, openness to seeing the, the spirituality in a place. Um, and so that's, it's such a lovely combination of things, um, that you're bringing. Um, you are also asking questions that people can, um, maybe if we look at a couple of the prompts, is there one that you'd love, you'd want to share the most from the book? Um, you know, I, I think the, um, the elephant blessings, um, have you ever tried something new that was scary or way out of your realm of daily living? Mm -hmm. How did you overcome your fear and how did you get the most out of your experience? I think that that's something that everyone can relate to, whether they've traveled globally or not. Have you had embarrassing experiences? How did you keep your sense of humor and dignity? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so when you travel, that adventure, because travel is always adventure, no matter if you plan it to be or not, um, you will be stretched. And I, I think that that's uh, one of the reasons why I wanted people to reflect on it, because if you just have the experience and don't take the time to get the most out of it, you've actually lost half the value of the travel, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I love with the... Um... The, the reflective questions that you ask in there is that it can apply to people whether they are going internationally or even in a new environment, a state over, right? right. I mean, it, anything that's shifting their perspective is, is opening us up to have, have that shift perspective. If you're going out of your comfort zone, if you're having a conversation with someone who might be different than you in certain ways that it, it gives us time to reflect and and learn from that other person. So I love I'm that thinking, you, yeah. I, I, sorry, as an undergraduate major in anthropology, I'm thinking even as my first time going off to summer camp, that was a completely different culture. Yes. Right? <laughs> it was only travel to New Hampshire from Connecticut, but it was, uh, it was adventure for mm -hmm. sure. And new experience and broadening, uh, broadening events. So, you know, I, I hope that really, anyone who identifies as female, because I, I do think it's a different experience when you travel or when you um, start new adventures. I do hope that these reflections will help them to think about the different cultures that they experience every day or that they've experienced even with more local changes in their life. Going off to college is a totally new cultural experience. Do you have any advice for women that are traveling perhaps on their own? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, prepare, 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 <laughs> you know, um, really get to know your, the environment that you're going to as well as you can, particularly the culture, um, particularly how women are treated, uh, the customs for dress, the customs for interactions with other women and people of different genders. Um, because it never fails when you enter a new culture that there's going to be a challenge that you didn't account for. So uh, for example, I went to Indonesia for the first time 
and my ride didn't pick me up. I didn't speak the language. I didn't have any you know, money in the local currency. I didn't have a, a dictionary with me. I didn't have a cell phone that worked in that country. Oh my. Right. So thankfully I had the phone number of the person who was supposed to pick me up and my major contact. And I knew that women in this Muslim country approached women only. And so I went to a woman and I said, do you speak English? And when she didn't, I said, you know, English, can you get me to someone who speaks English? And, and I was able to make the steps, take the steps to finally get a ride, which, you know, arrived four hours later, but God bless this woman. She actually fed me. So <laughs> I know. So, you know, you, you really do have to prepare for any exigency <laughs> that might happen. Um, and the more prepared you are, the better the experience will be right now. I can laugh about this. It could have been a very different experience. Yes. Yes. Anything else that you want to share with our audience? Oh gosh, that's, that's a big question. Um, I loved sharing these stories and reliving them was a gift to me as well. I hope the reason why I got this book out in the world and why I thank you for helping me to do that and our whole wonderful Green Heart Living team um, it, and Green Heart Publishing team is because I wanted some good to come of it. I wanted women to feel empowered, to uh, be entertained, but also to expand their worlds. And so my big hope is that good will come of this, positivity will grow. Um, and I would love to hear from anyone who, you know, would like to share their experience. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. It was so lovely to see you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Take care.